Okay, one of my early boxing mentors was a man named Piggy Hutchins. And he had been signed by Chris Dundee and had gone to New York and had met and trained with Georgie e. Abrams. And Abrams was from Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, and he fought all of the top middleweights of that era and went 15 rounds uh, with Tony Zale for the middleweight title and lost. Uh, and Piggy always made the distinction that he was a boxer. And that's how he could go 15 rounds with a killer like Zale. So, he had watched Abrams up close. There was no video back then. And so he taught me his style from what he remembered and having watched him in the gym in New York. And it was a stand-up style and it was all based off this jab step and then the left jab and then when you landed the jab you had to move when when you hit him here you were in reach to be hit by him and so rather than stop to look at what you did or try to throw another punch um, which is just creating the opportunity for an exchange instead you bounce off of that and make his return punch miss so you hit and you don't get hit you hit and you don't get hit okay I'm making this kind of simple but and then Eventually he would find their rhythm and get a combination off and then move. Or then you have to move your head one time. But you've got to make the return punch miss. Let's look at some video of Abrams in action. First against Sugar Ray Robinson. Both of these fights were in 1947 at the tail end of Abrams' 10, almost 11 year career. Georgie had 61 fights with a record of 48, 10, and 3. And then against Fred Apostoli. We're looking at his use of the left jab and footwork. This is what Piggy taught me. Abrams is a forgotten fighter today, but he deserves to be remembered. He lost a split decision to Tony Zale for the title, and he fought Charlie Burley to a draw over 10 rounds. 